Hello, I'm Pano Notaro, and I'm here to present our work called A Systematic Mapping Study in AIOps, in which we have collected and analyzed hundreds of contributions from the AIOps field in order to understand its extension, its structure, and also to gather insights about future developments of the field in the future. Um, let's start by motivating the need for such an analysis. We know that both research and industry drive the development and success of AIOps. In particular, research wants to develop new AIOps solutions. And in order to do so, it is required from a research perspective to have a list or catalog of the open problems and research questions to know which ones have been dealt in the past and the possible list of references of how this has been solved. And also to have a series of target problems that still need to be uh, dealt with. From an industry perspective, Instead, what is important would be to have a catalog, an index catalog of solutions, most, mostly focusing on their technical benefits, so which parts or components of an IT system they can improve, and what are the requirements required in order to, to run them. Uh, unfortunately, this structure, this information, this indexing in, in AIOps contribution, it's not there yet. Mostly for historical reasons, AIOps solutions have been developed separately in time over the arc of the last 40 years, and uh, they have been developed thinking of a specific use case. Let's think, for example, of anomaly detection that has applications ranging from fraud, de fraud detection to cybersecurity to medical diagnosis. And they have only been acknowledged, and the field has only been acknowledged later as part of AIOps. Um, this is the consequences that, of course, contribution that may be related to AIOps are scattered across a lot of different conferences, and they may apply different terminologies because they have been specialized to the specific fields for which they were, de they were developed. And this makes the collection and comparison task necessary to build this index very, very complex. Um, but also motivates the need for such a uh, a study. And uh, one more benefit of, of having such a, such a structure in AIOps is that it will allow us to examine the current and the future of the field because we can investigate which parts and which uh, um, topics inside AIOps has been more um, dealt in, in recent times and which ones we can expect in the future to be more relevant. In order to conduct this analysis, we use a tool called the systematic mapping study, similar to literature review but with a more quantitative uh, focus in which we, um, it's, it's made up of four steps. The first one is to construct and formulate the problems in the form of research questions, uh, in particular regarding which research topic we want to investigate and what is our, uh, our the information we want to, or the knowledge that we want to acquire from such, from such a, to a research topic, like in this case, AI Ops. Then we have the search where we develop retrieval techniques for material where this information may be uh, contained, selection by which we define criteria according to which uh, such information may be considered as relevant and useful for us or not, also based on qualitative uh, uh, measures. And finally, we have data extraction and mapping, which is the actual result analysis and where we develop categorization and visualization techniques uh, in order to investigate and, and answer our research questions. And this is what we, we will be doing with AI Ops. We will apply these four steps, uh, like uh, presented in the, in the next uh, few slides. Let's start from formulation. I mentioned how it's particularly relevant, re relevant uh, to, to a structure in AI Ops, but it's also uh, interesting to know why a systematic map study will be, uh, it, it's, uh, it's well motivated. The adoption of AI Ops recently has, be, has increased dramatically, and also there has never been an, a systematic mapping study done in this field. Uh, from a motivation perspective, we also uh, want to, to have a full view of AI ops to understand what are the frequency patterns present inside the individual sub areas that we may identify in our study. And also, uh, from an application perspective, we want to have a component to solution mapping such that when we know we want to improve a specific functional component in our IT environment, we know exactly what are the options or the solutions that we may look into. So, to summarize it in one goal, the, our aim is to identify the extent of current and past research in AI jobs. And if we want to posit that as a research question, we, 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 we posit as such. Uh, in particular, we, we say and we ask what categories can be obtained while classifying AI contributions in literature, 
what is the distribution of papers in such categories. And also we want to identify whether there is a, a temporal aspect to it. If there are temporal trends can be, can be observed in AI ops and maybe that may uh, project into the future. In terms of scoping, um, we, um, we, uh, we define AI ops literally. So as the abbreviation goes, AI for IT operations, and we exactly follow this distinction. So AI applied on IT operations problems. And although some definition may be more restrictive and only talk about AI in the context of data science and machine learning, we are more exhaustive just to, to be consistent and inclusive of all definitions. But still, even if we do so, AI has a blur definitions and it's difficult to really define what's part of, a, of AI and what is not. And to, just to have a convention here, we consider AI in a colloquial uh, fashion. So we consider AI everything that ex exhibits some sort of learning or problem solving behavior in an intelligent manner. So we not only consider data-driven inductive learning approaches like machine learning, but we also take into account possible search optimization and logic strategy. IT operations may be easier to define, but still require some clarification. We mean any process to administrate and deliver IT services. So we will include in our analysis anything that relates to data center administration, software engineering, especially in a DevOps setting, and the service desk. So anything that uh, aims to connect, to have a better connection between the public the, or the customers and the, and the administrators, because we consider it as part of IT operations. We pose both aspects, so IT operations and AI, as necessary conditions for the information to be relevant. And we try to enforce these rules in our search and selection techniques later presented. The goal, of course, is to avoid general papers that only treat single topics. Let's start from search. After, uh, start, after, after collecting an initial expert reference, uh, expert reference set, we, we decide uh, for the following search techniques. We, we start with the database search, which means we go online on big uh, collections of papers and we construct the queries uh, to collect results. And uh, in order to do so, we have a keywording technique called PICO, where we identify keywords and we use it to construct three sets of keywords. General AI ops keywords, like for example, AI ops itself, but these typically don't yield a lot of results because the terms AI ops, as we said, is not very much acknowledged and the, 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 miss, the, the fact that the structure is missing doesn't make AI ops a useful term to index results. And then we develop two other keyword sets, the first one for AI and the second one for IT operations. We also allow uh, equivalent definitions for such keywords. Then what we do is the following. Since we want to enforce the condition of AI and IT to be uh, necessary, we combine them in combinations and we run all possible queries. And we then, of course, add the general keywords to our query set. In practice, our query set is sent to three possible databases, IEEE, ACM, and Archive. Um, for collecting the results, we have two possibilities depending on, on the individual system. We can either use an API and then collect results automatically, but we, in some cases, we need to have a manual entry of the queries and then uh, export the results and do some automated processing to, to retrieve the, the data, like in this case, for example, ACM and IEEE. Those are examples of uh, output files. And for each uh, result, we collect search metadata, author, conference, citation counts from Google Scholar, and the year, the, which are necessary to conduct our analysis. We limit our results to 2,000 queries for practical reasons, um, but we keep this limit quite high at 2,000 because we, we want in this step to have a quite uh, sensitive output, so I recall, uh, to later re uh, re refine our search. So in this first step, we try to be more conservative in our approach. This is the drawback that in the end we have a lot of results. We end up with 83,000 papers. And this has the consequence that it will be difficult to uh, apply selection exhaustively. So in order to, to solve, to prevent uh, us from getting into this um, too long analysis, we, we want to develop a prioritization technique so that we only, we, we first look into papers that we think are more useful and more relevant for our study before than others papers. And to do so, we develop a ranking or sorting a criterion based on how many times papers have, uh, have been found and in which position in each search. And also we take qualitative uh, criteria as well into, into this. So for example, number of citations, year, and, and so on. So that we can also enforce some quality uh, of results here. Um, 
the problem with the, with doing so is that there is no stopping criterion, some, any objective stopping criterion. We we may stop after ten thousand as much as one hundred, and still there there is no a clear reason why. In order to 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 circumvent this, we we make the following observation: if we sort the papers. At some point, so we, we, of course, if we sort them, we get more interesting results. So the, the average relevance ratio is higher. But this, of course, very rapidly decreases when we, when we get uh, past the bulk of the relevance of the papers. And so by experimental observation, we notice that at, after some points with the paper ranked, we get to a distributions of relevance, which is similar to just not sorting the papers and just uh, exploring at random. When this is the case, we stop. So when we notice that the average uh, relevance of papers newly found in ranking order is uh, uh, inferior to the average at random, so 2.5 or maybe 1.5 in this case percent, then we stop. And this happens when we have approximately identified 430 relevant papers. Um, but in practice, how do we select if a paper is relevant? This is part of the selection step where we have where we, where we define inclusion and exclusion criteria. For inclusion, we only define one criterion, which is based on the, on the, on the, con, on the content or the topic of the, main, of the paper. And the condition is that it talks about IT system environments and also applies AI methods. And I give a, a non-comprehensive list of possible IT environments. In terms of exclusion criteria, we filter out non-English, non-accessible papers, papers with too broad scope, and also we manually exclude uh, papers, uh, topics that come up a lot, but that we do not consider as part of AI ops. And they just happen to happen to appear because of the of the similarity of keywords. We also enforce some quality evaluation and uh, disagreement resolution policies in this step. But these criteria are not only used in the 400 papers, but also in future search steps. And let me talk about these steps. We also enforce reference search which means we go into the relevant papers identified in the previous steps and we go through the references and uh, look in which of these papers are actually relevant for AI ops according to our selection criteria. And by doing so, we can identify 600 more papers. And also we do manual search, which means we go into relevant uh, conferences. And um, by doing so, we implicitly find very high quality papers and we also uh, find, find more results. These are the conferences we, we looked into. Um, in these steps, we're still applying the, the previous selection policies, but this time we're doing this exhaustively. So there is no approximation done here. And finally, we do search refinement. So we go back to the, the database search uh, step and we try to improve on our initial guess of keywords by using NLP, which means we find out which keywords uh, are present in relevant papers and we use this to understand which, which ones correlate with high relevance. And in particular, we are able to find new keywords that we didn't uh, think of before. And this allows us to improve our results and find 20 more papers. So in the end, if you keep the count, we have a total of 1,079 papers in our final AI ops results set. And this is where we were going to conduct our analysis. Our analysis is composed of a categorization step where we define the following categorization schemes. So data sources, so understanding each paper what, which data sources uses as input, like logs, matrices, codes, and traces. We also try to classify papers based on target components, meaning which functional part of an IT system they try to improve on. Uh, we also classify based on AI methods. And um, for example, SVM, neural networks, uh, uh, online methods such as ORIMA, and so on. To give you an understanding of why this, uh, this is useful, this allows us to construct uh, indexes like this one, where we, we can query possible contribution based on data sources and targets, like in this case. Uh, so that, for example, if we want to um, query a, a method that, that uses logs and, want, and can improve in some way our network, we just uh, look under the corresponding column and we can find uh, uh, an interesting method in AIOps. And this can be done thanks to the indexing based on categorization. There is one more aspect we're indexing in this table, which is the category index. And this is uh, because we also develop a taxonomy of AI ops, um, which, uh, di uh, which divides AI ops in two micro areas. You can see the, um, the scheme here, failure management and resource provisioning, and then co uh, continues to also 
construct other subcategories uh, for each individual macro area. Failure management is about treatment of failure from uh, prevention to complete mitigation, where resource provisioning is about the perfect allocation of resources inside the environment. Uh, if we now look a little bit closer into failure management, we can further distinguish specific tasks or subcategories uh, based on the specific way of handling failures. And what we can do is representing it on a, on a time axis, like on the right hand side. And uh, this is where each of these uh, possible uh, categories uh, happens in times. And for each of them, we can create instances of possible tasks that go in the direction, for example, in this case of failure prevention. Uh, in such a way, we, we have a, a very detailed and granular taxonomy, which can also be reported in our, in our indices. So in terms of frequencies, so answering research question number two, we observe that the majority uh, um, of papers, once we, we actually count the, the occurrences in each, in each of these beans, we observe that the majority of papers are actually associated with failure management, approximately 62%. And the most important areas of contribution are failure prediction, failure detection, and root cause analysis. While for resource provisioning, the most important contributions are in resource consolidation, scheduling, and workload prediction. On the right-hand side, you can see also a relative plot of distribution for failure management. So you can, for example, notice that a large proportion of prevention mechanisms is software defect prediction. Or that, for example, in root cause analysis, there is quite a huge overlap with the green, tasks, which are the ones that uh, come from the detection step. So not all papers uh, try to solve only one problem at a time, especially in failure management. Finally, we also want to explore uh, uh, temporal trends. And to do so, we have constructed a time uh, bar chart where we explore how each category and subcategory uh, evolves over time. Uh, just for clarity, resource provisioning has been aggregated in just one, uh, one color. But what we observe is, first of all, AI ops grows a lot over time. And second of all, the areas that have gained particular traction in recent years are failure detection, uh, which is even bigger than resource provisioning in, uh, in 2019, and failure detection uh, and root cause analysis. Sorry, uh, root cause analysis and unlike failure prediction come second. Finally, we notice how failure prevention and remediation are areas that still have a very low number of contribution have tested so far. And they, they may count as, an, as a blind spot or a future uh, space for development. So to summarize the outcomes, we have noticed how AI ops is a very broad topic that encompasses a lot of tasks, methods, sources, and targets. We observe an increasing interest in the topics over the last few years. We notice how the majority of works are concentrated around mechanism of anticipation, like uh, failure prediction and detection rather than resolution. As we have seen, there is not much in terms of resolution and recovery. We also notice, uh, we haven't noticed in this presentation, but it's something that comes up uh, in the study a lot, that uh, the most common metrics, sorry, sources are metrics, uh, logs, and traces. And you can also see actually these in the, in, the, in the table, in the index table I showed before. And this, there are of course limitations to what we have seen, but, uh, and I summarize them here, mostly, the fact of, uh, of keeping the scope of AI large makes this less time efficient and precise. And also there is some bias towards specific methods and keywords. And finally, we have made some approximations along the way, as I showed, we have to restrict the analysis because of the high number of papers, but we try to prioritize the, the higher quality and the most relevant results because they come up the most. And finally, since we have a lot of papers, we, we translate less effort towards, towards each of them. And we have to rely on paper summaries from others, which may also be a source of, of inaccuracies. This is the end of the presentation. Uh, I thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, I can answer them gladly. Thank you. Bye.